Hi everyone, this is Milos and these are my five favorite pieces of guitar repertoire. My number one favorite piece of guitar repertoire is Asturias by Albéniz and the reason for that is that it was the very first classical guitar piece I ever heard. Um, when I was very very young, about nine years old, I was going to the music school, I was I played the guitar, it just happened to be the guitar and I got really really bored with learning the music, uh, getting my nails longer and all of these kinds of geeky things and I said to my father I really don't want to go to the music school again. Uh, and uh, he wanted to inspire me because he thought it would be a shame for me not to do that and to close the door to music and I, I'm eternally grateful for, to him for that. Uh, so he went into the room, uh, picked up lots of uh, LPs and records he had um, in his uh, little library and one of the pieces, uh, one of the LPs he had was a guitar recital of the Spanish guitar of Andres Segovia and he played it to me and the first piece that was played and that was on there was Asturias by Albéniz and when I heard it I was completely mesmerized and that's when I changed my mind and I thought that it, I want to be able to play this piece one day. So uh, I practiced hard uh, and I f quickly realized that I had f fast fingers and that I was able to do this kind of spanish -y sound really well. Um, and when I was able to play Asturias I just remember feeling amazing. Uh, and uh, when the first album for Deutsche Grammophon came, when I had to introduce myself to the audience for the first time, I knew that that had to be the very first piece on there, uh, and it was, and I'm very happy for it. My second favorite piece of guitar repertoire has to be the Aranjuez Concerto of Rodrigo, uh, because when you are a guitarist, that's a dream for everyone, uh, because it's one of the most loved pieces of the guitar repertoire and it's loved so far and beyond the guitar world. Um, it exists in so many different versions, in movies, in different arrangements uh, and it's just this incredible, incredible melody and piece. Um, when I was uh, at the Academy here in London, the Royal Academy of Music, uh, arriving to that stage when you are technically and emotionally and musically able to play a concerto and do it in front of an orchestra really is a feeling like no other. Uh, it was also an important piece in my development as a recording artist. Um, it was the third album from Deutsche Grammophon and I recorded it with Yannick Nesse-Segan, my dear friend and uh, the London Philharmonic Orchestra. Um, London Philharmonic was the very first professional orchestra that ever gave me a chance. Um, as a soloist when nobody knew who I was, when I was really just a kid um, and, uh, and I love them for it and I'm so happy that they are on that album and that we kind of um, have that recording because recordings stay forever and I, and I just love the piece and I, and I love what we did with it there. So uh, that's my second favorite. You can't say second favorite, just number two on my list. A piece that has a really, really special meaning to me um, and which is my third choice here is uh, Carlo Domenicone's Coyumbaba. Now it's not a, a, a very well-known piece outside of the guitar world um, and I discovered it uh, just as I arrived uh, to London at the Royal Academy and in one uh, masterclass that we were doing there one of the colleagues played this very unusual piece and when I heard it, it was... I, I just remember that I never ever in my life reacted to a, to a piece of music in this way. Um, and it had this sort of exotic charm about it. There was, there was so much uh, poetry in the, in the song uh, that was used as the mo main motif of the piece and then the way it was developed and the technique that was used. And it's a really substantial piece, it's about 12 minutes and it just flows from, from the first note to the last in this continuous um, whirlwind of sounds and emotions and it's just amazing. Um, and um, I had to learn it and I didn't know why um, I loved it so much and then someone told me that the piece was inspired by the beauty of the Mediterranean Sea and that Koyumbaba is a bay in northwestern Turkey and that the composer was so in love with this scenery that he wanted to paint it with music. And you think of the sea when it's calm or when it's a storm or where there are, you know, the sound of the wind and the seagulls and all of that. And to think you can do all of that on the guitar was really amazing. Um, and later I realized when I learned 
what it was about is that the reason why I loved it so much is because I grew up in a place not dissimilar to that bay um, and uh, that sea is really one of the most important things in my life and I missed it so 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 much so learning this piece at that time was really like a like a medicine for my nostalgia if you like um, and I, I still play it in concerts and I love it so 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 much um, and I always love how it not only gives me the opportunity to 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 go to this special place of my childhood but it also invites the audience to go to whatever is their special place and I think music has this amazing power to do that and to to, to really take us on a journey and, and, and this piece does that so well so I love it very very much. My choice number four uh, will not relate to just one piece but it will relate to a composer and that has to be Bach because everything begins with Bach and uh, Bach universally works on every instrument. Um, of course at the time of Bach there was no guitar um, everything he wrote was either for keyboard, for violin, for, for, haps, for capsicord, for lute. But lute is kind of the nearest cousin of the guitar. So we play a lot of lute suites transcribed for the guitar. Uh, some lutes have more strings, so then we have to transpose the, the octaves. And it, it's quite a tedious process, but uh, an amazing process nevertheless. Um, and I just love how Bach, every time you take it, you discover something new and how in the good times and the bad times it's always there and it's always that sort of a point in an artist's life that brings you back to the center. And at the time when I was going through some, some tough things with my playing and not playing concerts for, for almost two years, um, going to that book of Bach suites and, and, and just reading through and seeing how the lines weave and create this magic uh, is very, very important to me. Um, all of his works are amazing. The Suite 997 uh, is the one I play in concerts right now and obviously it's my favorite right now. Um, but um, Bach is incredible and we are so lucky to have that music and to have um, as guitarists the opportunity to also play it in terms of transcriptions. And my fifth choice, I will summarize the whole chapter of that sort of direction uh, in this one piece called Blackbird of the Beatles, Paul McCartney, uh, because uh, at one point, a couple of years ago, I wanted to do something different um, and I love the music of the Beatles uh, and I love that song uh, very, very much. Um, and if you think about the original song, it just starts with this wonderful guitar riff and I thought this will sound great on the classical guitar. And that opened the door to a completely different world of music for me um, and I ended up recording a whole album of Beatles songs um, and they all started with the Blackbird. Sergio Assad, my dear dear friend from Brazil, an amazing guitarist and composer, um, did this arrangement for me and I'm so lucky because it's great um, and uh, I love playing it. <laughs> 